All right, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome everyone to our second product clinic focused on uh, prerequisites for AWS and specifically IAM policies. My name is John Zucker. I run our VUE technical community and I'm excited to have with me this morning or this afternoon or wherever you may be, Ron Howard, who is a technical success manager as well as a professional services engineer focused exclusively on our cloud products. So uh, Ron, excited to have you join us. Uh, thank you, John. Hello all. And um, I'm excited to go over AWS IAM policies and how to get it to work properly with our product line there in the AWS. Fantastic. Before, before Ron gets started with his content, just want to run through a few logistics. This session will last 45 minutes. Thank you for your feedback from our last session. So we've extended out 15 minutes. So we'll go for, for 45 minutes. During the session, if anyone has a question, please, please ask it in the Q&A panel. And we will do our best to answer as many questions as we can during the session. If we cannot, they will get answered in our VUE community, specifically in our hybrid public cloud group. So any unanswered questions will get answered there. In addition, all the questions that we do answer will also be posted there. We are recording this session and the video will be up on our, uh, our product clinic playlist on Gigamon TV out on YouTube. When we conclude the session, there's just a very short survey at the end asking you for a little bit of feedback as well as suggestions for other product clinic topics that you might be interested in. All right. With that, I'm going to stop sharing and hand things over to Ron. I'll be back with you uh, as we get towards the end of the session. Take Thank it away. You, Appreciate it. Everybody see my screen okay? Yep, looks great. Great. As stated, I'm Ron Howard. I do not have red hair or freckles. Um, but anyway, I will try to make this entertaining and enlightening and, and try to get all to your answers I can. If not, as John mentioned, uh, we will post them there in the community forum later. So let's get on with it. So our agenda today is that uh, we're going to have a quick primer on what is an IAM policy. Then we're going to go over the basic components of an IAM policy um, and then get into the meat of the product here, what requirements to have a successful deployment there with the Gigamon so you can get that cloud visibility. There are several different deployment models. Today, we're gonna to only focus on uh, setting up the permission sets for uh, VPC mirroring, sorry, yeah, uh, VPC mirroring. And then I'll show an example policy um, and then go through a demo and show a fabric manager without an IAM policy attached and how to identify um, elements that may be missing and going through a validation tool set and then followed by Q&A. So right off the bat, what is an IAM policy? IAM or Identity and Access Management Policy in AWS is a document that defines permissions and access controls for AWS resources. The key points about IAM policies is that it's a JSON document that specifies what actions are allowed or denied on which AWS resources for specific users, groups, or roles. Um, the purpose is used to manage access and permissions in AWS. And it's critical to all remember to implement the principle of least privilege structure. A policy consists of one or more statements, each containing an effect of allow or deny. It has action that lists the specific AWS service actions that are allowed or denied by the policy statement. Um, resources specific 
to AWS, which the actions apply. This is typically expressed in an AWS or Amazon resource name, an ARN. And there's also the effect, as we stated, which is either specifically allow or deny. And then optionally, you have the ability to do a SID, which is a statement ID. So here's an example of what the format looks for an IAM policy. As you can see here, you have the version, which controls. So always make sure to stay up to date. And this is the latest version. Define your statement. And as you see here, the SID or the statement identifier, what's the effect, the action that I'm going to take, what resources that I have access to, and conditional values. So there are multiple types of um, policies that can be used. What we're going to address today is going to be a managed policy. We do support both managed and inline policies for deployments. Here's an example, JSON, that we're going to be using today. And I'll be going over the elements there that are required and why they're required. It's one of the biggest questions that's constantly asked of me or us in general. Why do I need to have these specific um, actions or resources? To simplify the matters, you'll see that we have a wildcard of a star under resources. But the great thing is that you do have the granular ability to define the specific resource that's required. So this is these are the parts that are FM specific or the operation of fabric manager within AWS. As you can see, it needs uh, create tags. And it's a great thing there is that you can tag instances or functions within uh, your environment, or I should say resources. It needs to know about addressing VPCs that are in there because we need to know what we're going to monitor, the subnets that are within those VPCs, uh, key pairs to gain access to things, security group rule sets, and so forth. To manage the V-Series node, as you can see here, it needs to run instance, terminate, reboot, start, and stop. You're asking me, well, is that going to also control the instances that I already have inside of AWS that are not specific to FM? The answer is absolutely not. The policy itself is specifically designed to manage and control the virtual appliance or the EC2 instance in AWS the V-Series node. So for health checks and management of those V-Series node, this is why FN requires to have these functions. When we get to the VPC mirroring aspects of things, to be able to understand how to capture the data and where to send it, it also needs to have specific calls there for your um, traffic mirroring. Additionally, FM is also requiring access there to IAM functions as well. Um, and I will be going over in the demo specifically the different functions and why you're going to see it needs these accesses. So let's start getting into the demo. As you can see here, I am already in my AWS environment. I have spun up two different fabric managers, one without a policy, one with a policy. So let's go in and log into the one without first. Log in. So this fabric manager does not have an IAM policy attached to it. First telltale sign that it does not have anything associated to it. If I go over here to settings and credentials, you will see this EC2 instance role is not validated. If you recall, 
when I showcase the rule sets there regarding for needing access to um, IAM rule sets, this is where this would take place. Additionally, if I didn't check there, if I went in and actually started creating a new monitoring domain, let's just go and call it. I'm doing VPC mirroring, because if you recall, the policy that we set is for VPC mirroring. Um, go ahead and give it a name. So far, so good, right? EC2 instance role. Go ahead and choose where I'm located. Oh, look at that. First error message. It can't go in there. So now if you notice there within the account, nothing shows up because I've not given permissions for the fabric manager to communicate properly to exchange API calls with AWS so that I can actually gain that visibility into the deployed environment. Right now, I'm just a simple EC2 instance to where I can go and play around with the GUI interface. So how would I attach a policy to it? So if I go over here to my instances, you would think intuitively that I would want to go and look for IAM policies over here, right? To attach it. The way that you would attach it is that I would click on the instance ID itself, go down to security, modify IAM role, since I've already created one. Click update. Now it's important to understand that yes, I've applied a policy to it. Let's see if that it um, let's see if it's picked up yet. Nope, it's still propagating the information, still gathering information. Be patient. We can check permissions, which is a new feature in six seven. It's going and testing my environment. Oh, look, we have a success. So it's past the first step. So here's my policy. I can go and check my permissions. This is okay because remember, we're not doing an inline. We're doing a managed policy. This would definitely come up if we're doing a inline. And we're not actually sharing information across multiple accounts because if I was sharing that information on another account and wanting to gain that visibility, this one would also check off. So this is okay. And then I could actually go and check my policy to see what's okay. And remember, I do have the ability to be more critical of what resources that I'm allowing Patrick Manager to have access. But it's important to note that if you get to a granular state on the resources, that it's in alignment with what Fabric Manager needs to gain access to, as well as the deployed virtual node. So let's go ahead, and while we're waiting for that to propagate, let's go ahead and go into one that I've already set up. Let me go ahead and sign in. So here I'm going to go to my AWS monitoring domain. Let me go ahead and I will delete this just so that um, we can start fresh. Go ahead and click new. Go ahead and choose VPC mirroring. You can tell I'm being real uh, creative with the names, right? Go ahead and choose my region. 
As you can see now, it has identified the account where I have the associated IM policy. So now I have access to see every single BPC that is currently deployed within the environment. So here I would choose RMH just because I created the environment. And what's great, if you'll notice that it has the intuitiveness to know that if I have already chosen a, a VPC, that it will not bring up that same environment so that you don't click on the same environment twice. So I just click Save. As you see here, it's now ready to go ahead and deploy. And since I've given it specific information, I can then go through the steps, but this will be for a future instance where we'll be going over the full deployment of a virtual node there within a AWS environment. While we're at it, let's go and see if this here is uh, not yet. This is, I'm glad it's doing this because this kind of shows just be patient. I did apply the exact same policy. But we, we will get there, sorry. Wrong US. Oh, look at that. We now have visibility and we can actually move forward with our deployment there. Now let's go ahead and open it up to the floor, John, and answer some questions or have um, specific questions that people might have. Yeah, no, no questions have come in as yet, so carry on. Okay. So one of the things it might be is how would I gain visibility into another account? I would need to incorporate, I would need to add that account or that ARN to my um, IAM policy to be able to see it. And as soon as that's done, I could go back into my fabric manager and go ahead and add that to my existing monitoring domain, if need be. The other one is, am I required to go ahead and use those all of those policy sets or if um, if I'm not using VPC mirroring. So let's go through it. So as stated before, in this one here, this is for traffic mirroring. If I'm using an agent-based solution, I don't need this. Or if I am uh, doing third-party orchestration, I'm not going to need other I'm not going to need to have the ability to run instance because I am managing the environment through my own orchestrated methods instead of using Fabric Manager for the deployment. As I said before, we can use tags so that if your environment requires you to use tagging of specific resources, we do have that ability. We just need to have permissions to be able to understand those tags. And you can also create your IAM policy to focus on those user-defined tags as well, to even create more guardrails around your policy set. Got a, got a question for you. Go ahead. All right. So Bob is asking, wants, wants to get more specific on the resources, and the question is, would they all need to be defined manually, the resources. If I want to define, uh, instead of using the wildcard or the policy set, oops, not being very cooperative today, isn't it? <laughs> so where I have the, the, the wildcard or the star here, Yes, that would have to be user-defined, like I would define the ARN 
Uh, I could define specific VPCs where I only wanted to have access to that. I can get very granular. Um, it's a great question. And it falls in play. This is where reaching out to your uh, Gigamon SE or requesting assistance from professional services, we can help you define those granularity aspects of your uh, deployment. Bob, that answer that answer all your questions. It looks like it did. Yeah, he said he said correct. Okay. Yeah, correct. Is there any other areas that you wanted to to cover off at at this point? We definitely have time. Is everybody comfortable where to attach a policy? Um, I went over that relatively quick. Would people like to see that again? Yeah, why don't you go ahead and do that? Sure. So going back to my EC2 instance, you would need to be at, at this screen here to where I would right click on the instance ID itself, go down to security, modify IAM role, and then here I would actually choose my IAM policy or I can go and create a brand new role if need be. And the great thing about it is that if you're needing assistance on specifics, our community portal, our documentation itself has sample policies that you can use as guideposts. Now remember, each environment is unique. So um, you want, I mean, I would just use this as an example. Oh, isn't that special? That's yeah. the great thing about uh, a live demonstration is sometimes <laughs> we run into technical issues like this. <laughs> but That's what I was going to show is that we have, under the documentation, we have multiple examples of different policies that you can use. For example, if you need a gateway, um, that's there. Um, also, uh, we do have custom policies that we have helped customers out through professional services as far as creating something that's very granular. Um, hey, Ron. Yes, sir. Um, works on my machine, so I, I don't know if there was something. That's, you want to um, share your screen? Maybe yeah, I mean, if there's, if, there's some, if there's something you wanted to show in the documentation. Uh, Just do a search for the IAM policy. All right, give me one second. You see it? Right. So yeah. if you go, click on online documentation. Yep. Go to 6.7. 6 yes. Search for IAM. Right here. Go down to the... Down below is example traffic acquisition using VPC mirroring with network load balancer, or that one, either one. This one good? That one's good. All right. So here's another example of requirements, right? So within the um, documentation, we have multiple examples. Scroll down on the left hand side. Uh, there it is. So we're under permissions and privileges. Mm -hmm. There's different mm -hmm. examples where it says traffic acquisition using customer orchestrated source with the gateway load balancer. I'm going to click that one. Yes, please. As you can see here, it provides, as you can see, it's provided additional actions that are there allowed so that you can have a fully deployed environment. Again, since each environment is unique, we're just gonna have the wild card for resources, but you can go ahead and customize what resources you wanna have access to. I'm gonna I'm gonna switch back to 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 my deck here. Just run through through a few more things. We'll we'll take the we'll take the questions asked 
and answered and post them in the community. After the session, if any of you have a question that you were unable to ask or think of something new, you can ask that in the Hybrid Public Cloud group. That'll get posted to us and to all of our community members. I will make sure that it does get answered. As I mentioned, there will be a short survey at the end when you when you log out. It'll it won't take you long. Uh, please, it's it's really helpful to, to get your feedback. So please take a minute or so to look at that and provide uh, any information and suggestions that you might have. Uh, coming up, if for our next two product clinics, we're honored to have to have Ron as well. We're going to continue with sort of a series around AWS. At the end of July, we will cover ports and protocols. And then the end of August, we'll do deploying the cloud suite for AWS. With that, we're going to go ahead and conclude the session. Thank you very much, Ron. And uh, we look forward to seeing you guys at a future session. So thank you, everyone. Have a have a great day. Sure. Yeah, I want to thank everybody for taking time out of their day to be here. Awesome. All right. Take care, everybody.